Hello, Haley Backwards here. Tonight's screencast topic is a subject very near and dear to my heart. It's how to get your weather forecast without getting spammed by all of these ads. You know what I'm talking about if you've been to these commercial websites, you know, with the commercial weather places. So today I'm going to discuss weather.com. Gov, G O V with you and what kind of information you can get that they've buried that you may not even know is there. So first, how do you get your local forecast? Well, you can punch it in right here, punch in your zip code. You can zoom into an area and this will take you to the local office. And then you can go down and such a select a city. So you can punch in your zip code, you can type in something like Look, I already typed it apparently. Seattle, Washington, go. And this takes you direct to the forecast. Now, if you go this route, I want you to pay attention to that. That link is also very important. That will get you back to the, the local weather office. So, you're here. You've gotten here via some route. So, what can you expect? Seven day forecast, very standard. Now, I've noticed that in some of the locations, for some reason, this very unhelpful blob of information is there. But I found out you can click that and then this. See, let me show you. This is where you can find it. Who needs to know a map? If you typed in Seattle, you already know where Seattle is. So the current conditions are com like completely below the fold. Anyway, that's my mini rant. So do you just tell that, move down, you. So you can get current conditions. Now, one thing to note about the weather.gov data, they only update it approximate, well, actually once an hour, not approximately once an hour. Anyway, it's about like 52, 53 past the hour. I'm not sure when it actually updates to the website, but that's when the reading is taken. And then set seven day forecast, all good. And then of course, this is the other thing that you want to pay attention to, but if you scroll down, you can actually get an hourly weather graph without being spammed to death. Now, granted, there are some things where it could be much more usable, but here's where you find out you, this is the legend or whatnot. So temperature, wind chill, or well, apparently there's no wind, wind there as high as seven miles per hour. And then, of course, you can look at precipitation potential is one that I'm often looking at. That's the brown one. Sky cover, if you want to know when it's going to be sunny and you're going to be happy. And then, of course, if there's a precipitation chance there, then you'll get a breakdown of what it is. Seattle, not going to get snow anytime soon. So let's back out and go back to Louisiana. If I can figure out how to get that. Look, there we go. How many times? They are currently under a tornado watch. So let's pull up one of these wonderful forecasts. Let's go to, let's see, Jasper, Texas. Ah, Orange, Texas, that's a fun name. Let's go there. Let's see. Too short front page. Latest conditions. There we go. I could edit that out later. Apparently, I do not get to my local forecast through that route very often. By the way, tip, you just go to the address bar. Type in weather.gov slash your zip code. That's the quickest way to get it, really. Anyway, so they have apparently not in Orange, Texas. That was very bad. Let's go back. There we go. Okay, I should have done that instead. Why I show you this one is because if you, for this area, they are actually actively in a tornado watch. This is one of the important areas to watch as it will tell you your hazardous weather conditions. And then you can click on it to read more information. So yeah, one more tip. View yesterday's weather. I have not actually been there, but I was going to tell you about the three day history and apparently, this is the problem with doing it live right now. We're just going to go like that. Okay, yesterday, giving you locations and stuff. Uh, past weather, let's try that. Anyway, let me show you 
I'll look at that later. 3-day history, this is the fun one. You get this breakdown. So if you were thinking, oh my god, man. I woke up in the middle of the night and I was so, so cold. That, you know, that next morning, you go to weather.gov, you go wherever, and then you do three days of history, and then you can find out how flippin' code was it. So yeah, we're gonna go to this, and uh, I don't know what this one does. Past. So you can get whatever this is. I have no idea. How was that? Being very helpful. Anyway, the point is, weather.gov, treasure trove of information, not covered in layers upon layers of ads that are just obnoxious and maybe hog your screen. But the point is, they tend to bury it. Like, who's going to scroll down there necessarily and say, oh, our new weather graph. You know, I am embarrassed at how long it took me to actually notice that. In fact, I think somebody else told me about it, so I never noticed it, you know. Anyway, so I hope this has been helpful. Oh, wait. Uh, I hope this is going to be even more helpful. Let's look at radar. Radar is another good one. Here's one thing that you want to learn how to do. Loop. Because why do you want to loop? Not all storms travel in the same direction. So you can't just look at a static radar image. Now in this case it looks like it's basically booking east. But in a lot of cases it's not. So if you were to just look at a static image of the radar, you might be fooled into thinking, oh, I'm not going to be in it when in fact you will. And also, if you happen to know what these things are, you can look at the storm relative velocity and the base velocity. Yeah, no tornadoes currently, so I can't show you. Now, one big problem, in my opinion, is that the weather.gov images they have in this specific place are not very high res, so you're not going to be able to see like very detailed. Anyway, quick breakdown. Storm relative versus base. Because I read this and I'm not sure I still understand it. Base velocity is just the direction of the winds, period. But somehow, storm relative velocity is able to take into account the storm, like if you've got a little supercell and it's going here, or something, it's able to take that into account and it subtracts it from the velocity thing. And the point of that is sometimes there's a mesocyclone or whatever, you know, little rotation couplet that might not be really immediately obvious to the human eye when you're looking at the base velocity, whereas it would be suddenly, oh my god, tornado, if you're looking at the storm relative velocity. Anyway, now I hope this has been helpful or something. Uh, yeah, and you can also go to adjacent radars. As you can see, I'm still on base velocity or storm relative and there's other ones, too, you can look at. And frankly, I do not know what the difference is between composite reflectivity and base reflectivity. But, yeah, mm -hmm. whatever. Weather.gov, you should hang out there because, you know, your taxes go to it, man. And your taxes should continue to go to it because they're the people who are actually you know, issuing the watches and the warnings. It's the commercial providers are saying, hey, we're going to take this date and cover ads in it. Yeah. Anyway. So, I don't know. If you have questions, leave me a comment or something. I never know how to end these things. So I just have to eventually say, and that's the end.